I V M. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 151. We've finally crossed our milestone number, <laughs> and here we are on the next chapter. Yes, we are. Today? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm extremely excited to go from you know. The uh, into the, next the, from the one, yeah, the next milestone, <laughs> two hundred coming up soon. <laughs> indeed, indeed, and you know, uh, in continuing on our journey of amazing sort of speakers that have been with us over the past so many weeks, uh, and of course, a lot of them being fintech founders, mm-hmm. including our last many of them, uh, last few episodes mm-hmm. we've had. Uh, we are actually continuing uh, on that uh, journey today. We are talking to Mr. Girdar Yasa, the CTO uh, of Lending Cart, another company which has been around for a while, which not almost not not too many people may already know about. Actually, the, they, well, I mean, like it is. It, so, I mean, like I'd heard of the company for a long time. Right? I don't know if you remember. There was a time when uh, there were a number of companies that came out with like the K A R T extension to yeah. it, right? So, I remember hearing about it back then that this is a thing, and a lot of them have done really, really well, right? Flipkart, Lenskart, yeah. etc., and Lending Cart yeah. too. Uh, but I mean, like you know, it was. Uh, uh, I, I remember hearing about them, but I mean, like finding out what they did and how they go about doing it right this was a little new to me right i th- i did not understand the depth of their operation and this was really really interesting to get to get into that's true that's true no and very cool and the fact that you know they they're not just a consumer product company they're also a technology platform company uh within themselves right mm-hmm. which provides technology plat- uh, as platform to others uh, in the ecosystem. So there's a lot of interesting stuff to unpack on this episode for uh, everyone listening today. So let's take a break, uh, come back and talk to Giridhar. Did you know that AI can help you recommend your next favorite podcast? In almost any field, AI can be an extremely important tool in your arsenal, but it can often seem daunting to get into. Luckily, Intel's Digital Readiness Program is here to empower everyone with the skill sets, mindsets, and tool sets to use in an ai field world. So you can be ready to develop AI for sports if you want to as well. As part of Intel's AI for Youth program, Intel's been working with the CBSC Ministry of Education and the Government of India to empower today's youth to build social impact solutions while demystifying what exactly AI is. How do you take advantage of this? Purchase an Intel Core powered PC and you get free access to 80 plus hours of immersive and hands-on training about AI. On completion of the program, along with the certificate, you get access to AI tool sets to try to put what you learn to good use. So log on to futurebanawonderful.intel.com. Future Banaw Wonderful by bringing home an Intel powered PC. Hey, welcome, Giridhar. How are you doing? Very well, Siddhartha. Thank you for inviting me to your podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and of course, uh, I think we were speaking earlier and. Uh, you know, like everything we do today, this is yet another sort of virtual meeting. I would have uh, loved to invite you actually to our studio and do this uh, face to face. But this is the format we have. So, uh, uh, you know, I'm glad you could join us. And, uh, you know, the podcast format like our listeners uh, like is, uh, you know, it's meant to have uh, real, real conversations. And uh, that's what we hope to have today. So. I would love to start, uh, you know, and get everyone listening in to sort of understand a little bit about your background and, you know, how you came to, you know, uh, what the Lenny Card story is today. Uh, you're, you know, you're the chief technology officer. What, uh, what is the underlying premise of the product itself? Uh, and a little bit, a little bit of context setting, if you may. Definitely. I think, uh, you know, I think a lot of uh, listeners to this podcast may not necessarily know about Lending Card. Uh, so I'll probably start off there. Yeah. Uh, you know, this country has about 30% uh, of industries as micro, small and medium enterprises. And uh, India's exports about 40% is again from this micro, small and medium enterprises. And access to financial products for these MSMEs, right, is very, very challenging. You know, you talk to any bank, you talk to any NBFC, you talk to RBI officials, you talk to government officials, you know, they'll echo the same thing. They'll say that, you know, credit, access to credit is one of the fundamental things about growth for an economy. And this particular segment is underserved in that aspect. Mm -hmm. There are various reasons for that. One is that this entire space, there is no sort of a uh, lot of records available, right? I mean, there's no formal uh, ecosystem surrounding the data that uh, these industries maintain. I mean, it could be a welding store down the road. 
it could be a cloth mm. merchant you know next street they're all msmes right they don't do not have a finance department to maintain uh, records the way you would want them to or a bank would want them to to be able to give uh, credit right. uh, that's that's uh, one point right the second thing is that all these msmes are spread across 5000 uh, odd cities towns and uh, villages across the country and uh, you know not more than uh, 800 to 900 of these locations have a branch of a bank or an nbfc within right. 20 kilometers range right. right so i think you know that's the extent of the problem they do not have access to credit most of them are uh, quite new to credit as well and that is where lending card uh, comes into picture what we've been able to do uh, shiladitya is that we've been able to figure out how credit worthy a business is and the set of people running a business are even though they may not have bureau record purely on the basis of their bank statements right and we are able to underwrite and give them access to credit completely digitally without any judgmental process uh, right you you and i we walk into a bank say that uh, you know we need a home loan or an auto loan right there is collateral associated with that you know we probably have a study income but still you know uh, we are looked at almost as if we are criminals right you know this guy is going to take my yeah. money is he going yeah. to return it or not right so it's the story right and you can imagine how difficult it is for a uh, small entrepreneur to get uh, access to credit and we've it's, been it's able like to guilty, guilty until proven innocent is the way that banks uh, <laughs> absolutely. treat you i think absolutely yeah. right and and even then you know it's very difficult to get access to credit unless until this collateral associated with that yeah so we've been able to underwrite this customers we've been able to disperse loans across you know 2000 odd locations across the country and that's how lending card started right with that singular vision of being able to provide credit to uh, msme segment uh, which is unsecured in nature and which is completely digital in terms of its delivery hmm. how long ago was this and like uh, you know if you could give us a little bit of the market state today of course today we know lending uh, fintech in general has exploded you know there are so many products or so many uh, categories of the market but when you all uh, you know initially envisioned this uh, was this problem that well defined what was the what was the status quo and how did you go about disrupting it with technology right so uh, lending car started in uh, 2014 thereabouts right and uh, the founders then and hers um, in particular was very very passionate about the segment you know he had an excellent background in banking he worked in india he worked abroad and he came back then harsh uh, sort of uh, realized that his life's goal is to is to make sure that this uh, segment is well served and initially it was uh, this, this there was a business that he was running which was around consulting right and and being able to uh, provide access to uh, credit through banks to various people Mm-hmm. that is when he sort of realized that okay there is a lot of scope here uh, there's a there's a lot of uh, uh, meat here in terms of being able to provide access to financial products without having to uh, you know touch the customer physically mm-hmm. right so about 7 uh, years ago was when all this had started and it's been going really really well uh, since then the growth has been phenomenal right i mean if you look at some of our numbers in terms of dispersals or the uh, emi is collected or the number of customers that we've served or the number of cities or aum it's all been you know 200 300% uh, north of that right i mean phenomenal growth so the market is really really uh, great and it's it's a very big market and when you talk about fintech i think a lot of people largely talk about payments right i mean a lot of right. people talk about uh, Uh, consumer lending a lot of people talk about <coughs> constructs that <coughs> sorry a lot of people talk about constructs like buy now pay later right which yes. is in the consumer segment uh, for uh, you know goods uh, that that consumer goods right but uh, the growth engine of the country right in terms of the uh, small enterprises the medium enterprises they are still they still have been underserved and uh, to be honest we are the only game in town doing what we do oh okay and uh, you know like you are talking about serve lending to msmes who typically you know you shared a little bit earlier but again just to get into the understanding of the exact market piece right you typically these people need collateral like business loans right this is a business right. loan so it's a loan for expanding your business it's a loan for uh, buying more uh, inventory or whatever that may be right uh, do you uh, 
typically uh, the way i understand it is that all of this is very subjective to what you want to use the investment for uh is there any uh, layer of intelligence which you add to even you know how and how you choose to give uh, uh, loans to these people and and if you could talk about the product in itself you know what is the user flow and how does it do what it does right so um, good point right typically this is for business and hence it's either a working capital loan or a loan for um loan against invoice maybe in invoice discounting or an overdraft kind of a facility yeah. and it's for Got business it. and the way we ascertain whether uh, this is for a business or not is by looking at current account uh, cash flows and uh, looking at uh, a business registration proof like gst or you mm -hmm. know there's a bunch of other business registration proofs as well we look at those right and that is where our data comes from uh, if you ask me what a typical flow looks like you as a customer you probably log on to our app or to our mobile site and then you give us some basic details you know how old is your business what's your annual turnover uh, you know how old you are uh, your date of birth you know maybe even the pan number once uh, we get that information we use that to uh, tap onto a few apis and networks and then pull out your uh, gst information and from there we ask you for your bank statement and uh, you typically upload your bank statement maybe mm -hmm. the past 12 month bank statement in pdf format we then uh, look at the cash flows within the bank statement and we have various derived variables or you know in machine learning parlance you would call them as features right and you have a bunch of features you extract those features and those features are fed into a model a credit model that uh, gives us a few output parameters which is how credit worthy is this individual what is the amount of loan that we can offer them for how long what is the tenor and if we offer them that particular loan at a particular interest rate for the tenor what is the probability of default hmm. right basis this you know we present the terms and conditions saying that hey look this is what we can offer you and you as a customer would accept it or probably negotiate a little bit on that and then uh, finally once you accept it you say that let's do an agreement on this the agreement is generated automatically then you go through a video kyc process wherein uh, you probably have to do this within your premises of business right maybe with the background of your store or something like that oh. and then uh, you collect yeah and then you collect uh, uh, and then that's that's the information that we collect right at that time you show you answer a few questions that are uh, that prove that uh, this is a live conversation uh, you know the uh, coordinates uh, lat long are recorded at the same time and then you ask for dispersal that uh, money is dispersed into your bank account we record uh, your uh, e mandate we take an e natch on it that is used for collecting it's a very seamless and uh, smooth process if you have uh, uh, what is required up front now there are of course challenges in this right uh, mm -hmm. this is the basic product this is what the user experience looks like there are challenges in this in the sense that you probably want to wait saying that Uh, will I get a better loan from someone? Mm -hmm. Will I get a better interest rate? Will I get more uh, uh, products attached with this? Can I get insurance along with this? So at that time, the customer might uh, look at another uh, alternative. So we, you know, use a little bit of gamification. We maybe, you know, sometimes we our sales process sort of calls them and um, talks to them and negotiates and then gives the customer what they want. So that is a little bit of an additional uh, process sure. that is involved. Sure. So, so fundamentally shiladitya this is the this is the base product there are many nuances many complications you know we could certainly talk sure. about this so uh, actually yeah let's uh, to 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 a degree right uh, i wanted to ask about uh, so uh, well actually i wanted to ask about something else but now you're saying that let's talk about the nuances <laughs> that's also something i wanted to talk about uh, which is uh, uh, so when you talk about uh, analyzing through cash flow right uh, that feels uh, uh when you say uh, and and then you pull in gst information and stuff like that you use all of this to create your own credit rating of some sort and decide based on that right uh the uh is cash flow i mean like how important is that in the sense of this in these small in, in these small businesses right because i feel like a lot of the small businesses that i have uh, come across or people have spoken to me about they actually that's their biggest problem right that the money does not move at all and if that's the basis on which loans are being uh, analyzed for them that that feels like 
I, I don't know. I mean, like, does, does that really solve as much of the problem as it could? So, Amit, I think there are two parts to this, right? One is that how much useful information can you extract from that bank statement, number one. Second thing is what is the requirement of a, a business? Right. Now, if I'm a small business and probably I have two current accounts, maybe, and I'm running my business using those two current accounts. Uh, let's say I come to you and I say that, hey, you know, Amit, I need uh, 50 lakhs of loan. Hmm. Then what's your way to ascertain whether 50 lakhs is my requirement, right? Or am I asking you uh, 50 lakhs maybe to spend 35 lakhs on a car and the rest of the 15 on the business? Right, or right. if 50 lakhs is entirely for my business because the latter is what we want to lend for. Right, correct. Right? So a good way to try and understand that is to look at what is this business making, right? What are, what are their uh, what do their revenues look like? And a very good proxy for that is a bank statement. Okay. There are alternative uh, information uh, avenues as well. Like you know, if you are filing GST returns on time, you know, mm. and we look at that. So that's a that's a good avenue as well. But right. the the vehicle for moving money really is the bank account. Okay. And it's it's a very good representation of how you can uh, ascertain what the credit worthiness of a customer is. Okay. Now there is other uh, other ways as well, right? Like you know, if you and I go and we want a home loan, then an evaluator comes home, looks at the property, and mm -hmm. says that this is what's worth worth such and such, right? And they also look at our civil score because you know how mm -hmm. did we borrow in the past? How much did we right. borrow? Uh, did we pay on time? Now, a lot of these customers that we are talking about, they are probably new to credit. Someone has started a coaching center, right? And they've never taken a loan. Maybe they started with mm. three students in their uh, backyard, right? And then they are mm. wanting to buy a small premise to and hire two people, and they need a loan for that. They've never taken a loan. They mm. don't have a bureau score. They don't have a credit score. So how do I know whether this customer can be given a loan and how much so naturally i say that hey have you registered your business if you have and you have a bank account associated with it then why don't you tell me what's coming in and out of that bank account and we'll figure the rest right does, uh, does uh, huh, interesting I, i'm guessing this gets complicated when people merge their professional and personal like proprietorships generally func function out of oh. people's personal bank accounts right does this Very complicate true. issues sometimes sometimes or is that i <laughs> i know this might be uh, somewhat adjacent to the con main conversation but i just uh, it, it came to my mind it certainly does, Amit. And, you know, it's not just one bank account, right? People may have multiple bank accounts. They make yeah. one bank account really clean. Huh. Right? Yeah. And, the other set of, like... and the other set of bank accounts might be problematic as well, right? So, right. Uh, and our uh, model actually takes care of that, right? We look at where money is coming in and going from. Hmm. Okay. And, uh, uh, and there have been more advances, like the other day, the account aggregator ecosystem went live wherein you know through the intermediary of the account aggregator we are able to identify what all bank accounts a particular person is associated with right correct right so naturally we'll be able to derive that information right awesome very interesting and uh, you know uh, a lot of what you mentioned is obviously aided by uh, the general advancements of uh, you know apis and uh, you know the our payment ecosystem right the gst uh, the ability to pull that uh, account aggregator being the most recent so mm -hmm. all of these things obviously aid your model and the ability to pull information in a lot of ways right uh, but back when you started and the, in in the initial days what was uh, you know what was it what was really available to sort of take the risk uh, because and and could you really give that delta uh, in terms of uh, you know then uh, then let's say the amount you are giving right the the capital amount that you are giving versus a bank who would say okay show me put your office as collateral and show me this show me that were you really able to give that delta is also another question i had like alternative lending always existed right i mean uh, just to preface like there were nbfcs there were at the shady end, there were the loan sharks. Correct. So, uh, what are you able to give the amount needed at the right interest to make your option lucrative versus the others? Is what right. my question. Right. So, uh, Shiladitya, it's uh, very interesting, right? Because you mentioned loan sharks. You are willing to go to a loan shark 
and borrow at a 36% interest rate or you are willing to swipe a credit card and buy you know goods that are necessary for your business so look at the amount of interest rate that you are willing to pay hmm. for your business uh, to run right so uh, clearly you know we are able to lend below that and that itself is a big uh, advantage right number one the second thing is that uh, when you borrow on your credit card right uh, it is um, there's there's a lot of charges right and uh, yeah, there are red yeah. flags the moment you borrow on credit card and probably say that hey i'm going to use this like a loan your phone starts ringing and it doesn't stop ringing right and the bank yeah, yeah. I, I have, doesn't let go i founded a business multiples of them so i know exactly what you're talking about so, <laughs> yeah right so I'm that's sure Amit uh, does too. yeah so there's a, there's a great uh, value proposition uh, that we've had from day one now we did not have all the information that we have today Right. right. So earlier, uh, you know, if we wanted to do KYC, we couldn't do video KYC, right? But uh, we could send a local person, right? Uh, tie up with someone and send a local person saying that, hey, you know, take a selfie and send it across, pick up their uh, KYC documents, do an in-person verification of uh, OVDs, originally verified uh, documents, and then you know, courier them across to us. So there were various uh, ways within the regulatory ecosystem that uh, we've been able to. take advantage of and design a product appropriately our uh, models were not as sophisticated as they are uh, today right okay. there were uh, there were experienced credit analysts involved in the system at that point in time but overall uh, we believe that all this can be done digitally without mm-hmm. having a branch presence and okay. the ability to scale was uh, phenomenal from day one correct okay. correct so and and that's uh, again uh, you know obviously you identified that this is a very large market and a very underserved market and you mentioned earlier that's the reason you all got started uh, but like most things early uh, you know disruptive in the financial services system there were hurdles to actually enabling it right let's say that te- from a techno there was a technology hurdle there was a regulatory hurdle there was purely just the uh, you know i'm guessing you are a nbfc yourselves today uh, you learned from your own book earlier you probably have worked with a bank uh, and had to lend off of their book how was uh, what was the appetite for uh, doing this uh, you know with with your early partners so uh, you know i think uh, for, as far as lending lending on our books on or with partners books is concerned we you know we do that quite a bit even today right i mean uh we don't lend exclusively from our books we have co-lending arrangements with a bunch of uh, you know funds banks and uh, uh, nbfcs as well hmm. that's uh, that's been there always that's right standard. and okay that's been that's been there but uh, that that part is growing right and the reason why it is growing is because we've been able to understand how to do this and hence mm-hmm. the confidence that a lender would have on our process Hmm. is quite high so if we go to a lender and we tell them that look you know we have this process um, this is what we are uh, guaranteeing in terms of default and we'll back that guarantee up saying that uh, if i say that a uh, individual is credit worthy for maybe 10 lakhs for 3 uh, years at uh, maybe 25% uh, interest rate and the probability of default is 2% uh, so are you willing to lend to mm. a, a pool of individuals mm. like this so a bank or an mm. nbfc would say that sure but what if uh, the uh, pro- default goes to 3% mm. yeah right so there are two ways we uh, answer that we say that look we have done this so we know that we can stay within 2% and uh, mm. we'll back it up with an fldg which is if beyond the 2% someone defaults then we'll take it on our books aha mm. uh-huh. okay. right so there's a lot of confidence that we have in our systems and Correct. in our uh, evaluation process and in our delivery mechanism and in our collections intelligence and our collection mechanism so uh, others can onboard to our platform yeah, you actually money. answered a question i was going to ask anyway about are the you know are those default numbers or you know we it's a very common banking term you hear npas uh, uh, are those we we've always known that those are bad in the traditional banking ecosystem right i mean in fact they're worse at the higher end and all of that we understand 
but the target segment you go after uh, is has your thesis held uh, you know uh, held for all these years that Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. See, uh, last week, uh, you know, Harsh, uh, our CEO, right, he got an email from a transport company in Ludhiana. And uh, that email read something to the effect of, you know, uh, we started a business. We were involved in the transport industry for a long time, but uh, three of us started, a uh, friend started this business uh, just before COVID. And uh, we did a bunch of mistakes. And then COVID, was, uh, nobody was willing to touch us. You gave hmm. us a loan. Right. Here's what they said. They said that when nobody was willing to touch us, you gave us a loan, uh, but we haven't been able to pay two EMIs. Now, I'm not sending this email across to uh, ask for a waiver. I'm just hmm. sending this email to give you guarantee that we will pay. Hmm. Right. Hmm. And it was a very touching email to see. Right. I mean, saying that this is what we sort of live for. Right. And uh, work for. Right. So our thesis is, is not that, okay, you know, there's data, of course, we are able to crunch and uh, figure out using data what uh, credit worthiness is. But at the same time, nobody wants uh, the social stigma of having, you know, defaulted and people right. chasing them down for uh, payments. Right. You know, uh, yeah, that's a very, uh, you know, it's a, I would say, endearing thing to hear, uh, especially when when we the first thing we started was that everyone treats you as a crook by default. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> that's that's actually the uh, interesting, you know, uh, opposite of that, uh, the reality that is the opposite. So on that note, uh, Giridhar, I'd like to, you know, come back and talk some more, but a quick break uh, before we do that. So Amit, Intel's impressing me yet again. You heard about Intel vPro, huh? Yeah, I did. Exactly. I mean, imagine you're a security and IT manager. There's nothing oh. like Intel vPro out there. It basically helps you protect your entire organization's computers from like cyber attacks and basically keep them functioning all the time. Yeah, I know. I know exactly what you mean, right? I mean, like cybersecurity yeah. is like a major, major deal these days, right? I know that both at work and at home, I'm really taking a lot more care about these things than I used to. Exactly. And, and the way I see it, right, I mean, Intel has obviously developed this a lot. They have something called a threat detection technology. They have something called a hardware shield. It's basically everything that you need to protect your entire organization from stuff like ransomware, crypto mining, all of these latest sort of threats that are out there. So I yeah, love it. I, I, I... And you know what's really cool? It's not it's not just that, right? They also have this below the OS security, which is basically used for hardware and firmware changes to identify when stuff happens over there, or when there's stuff uh, when there is like you know uh, malfeasance happening on your application or data protection stuff. So I mean, like uh, it, this really helps with memory cor corruption, all that kind of stuff, right? So they're just basically kind of helping to really reduce the number of attack surfaces an organization has. Exactly. And that's what a business needs, right? I mean, pretty much a business wants that, okay, I have one platform and I get all my checkboxes around, you know, all these various small, small things that I need to protect it. So it's good to see that Intel is developing a platform that's built for businesses. Yeah, and it really is, right? I mean, like, uh, it's even the cloud-based manageability of all these services, right? So basically, yeah. everything can be done remotely. Whether it's managing or repairing these systems, you can just, uh, basically, nobody has to go anywhere. Especially in these times, I think that really does help. Oh yeah, I mean, during work from home, it's basically exactly what you need. It's like a, it's a godsend sort of technology. Amen to that. And so remember everybody, just go check out Intel vPro and Intel's other amazing products at intel.in slash IT heroes. Remember, Intel vPro, it's built for business. Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, you know, Girida, you've been, uh, I know, pay patiently answering a lot of our curious questions around, uh, you know, lending to the MSME market. Uh, and I think Amit, you had one more. Yeah, well, so actually, uh, I was looking at your website, right? And while looking at your website, uh, I saw something on it which prompts this question, right? Like at the bottom of the website, there is a note saying that no processing fees are being charged by lending card before disbursement mm -hmm. of the loan amount. Any individual claiming otherwise must not be entertained. This kind of tells me that like there is a reseller system that's developed kind of on its own without your pushing it. Is that the case over here? Or like some other people coming in and kind of like, you know, helping other people get loans and kind of uh, saying that, hey, we'll become agents for lending card. Is, is that something that's happening? Is that something that people are doing? Uh, how, how, so how... There is a, there is a, uh, there's a sales process to uh, lending. And, uh -huh. uh, you know, in a lot of, uh, there's what you call as DSS, right? Direct selling agents uh -huh. who involve uh -huh. themselves in this process. Now, 
um, there are a lot of models, right? Wherein if you were to look at uh, NBFC or a bank that has a physical presence, mm-hmm. just the fact that they are having to send someone across to collect documentation to verify, uh, you know, your uh, premises, maybe to evaluate your uh, collateral and uh, do a valuation of that. All that involves uh, heavy physical um, evaluation, right? And and uh, there is there is expertise involved in that. Mm-hmm. You have know, to pay for this uh, for that expertise, and and the number of people that would knock on your door to sort of ask for a loan will be very high. So if, so, which means that you have to charge a processing fee; otherwise, you cannot uh, sustain. Right. This is very different from a digital process. Hmm. Right. In the digital process, if I built in tech systems that can enable this, I can scale. And with scale, my costs reduce. Mm. Mm. So overall, the cost of customer acquisition right, and the cost of uh, delivery uh, and the cost of, you know, and, and, the tr- and the cost of servicing sort of are amortized, right, within uh, the cost that I have incurred, incurred for putting up my technology systems and uh, using them to, uh, you know, take the customer through the funnel and uh, service them and uh, provide a loan, which is very, very different from a physical process. Correct. And, mm. and hence, uh, you know, the, the uh, processing fee that we are talking about can be very, very low for, uh, for something that is completely digital like Lending Card. Mm. Okay to the point of it being even zero right unless until we disperse and because you know naturally uh, when we disperse there's two ways right i mean we could even either merge into a rate of interest or you know call that as a, a different fee or even provide a small business with the value add products right saying that look you know you probably need insurance and so all that is uh, possible on it so but uh, the warning note that you have seen on the website, right? It's largely telling people that look, you know, if someone approaches you saying that I'll get you a loan mm-hmm. from lending card, pay me a certain right. amount of money, uh, you probably don't want to trust them. But is that yeah. something that happens? Is that kind of thing? Uh, I, I mean, like again, uh, I, I've heard a lending card for years, right? You mm-hmm. keep hearing the news stories and such like that. But is there that degree of uh, general kind of? Uh, uh, is lending card reaching a brand of that nature where people will go out and say, "Hey, I'm going to get your lending card loan"? Uh, like, is, okay. is is that? Yeah, wow, that's amazing. That happens quite a bit. Yes, that happens quite a bit. In fact, you know, there's all uh, all kinds of social fraud as well uh, that uh, mm-hmm. that takes yeah. place, right? And we do have, and that's the challenge that we have. You know, we go grow x, 10x, 100x. Then how do we combat that fraud? How do we combat uh, uh, these challenges using technology? Using technology because that's the only scalable way of doing it right you know on that note you know you shared earlier of course the you know the underlying technology is your model your you know machine learning uh it obviously gets better uh month on month uh, quarter on quarter as you know as more systems get integrated to it and as as uh, more data comes in right uh where uh you know how how do you think uh you still maintain your edge uh, as a as a service and as a you know as a independent sort of lending platform, now that this data is also sort of the, the rest of the market seemingly has caught up to this, right? I mean, at some point, uh, and I'm making that I'm throwing that assumption out there. If I love to know if you agree or disagree, uh, but there is generally more data, digital data, about every business available today, right? Uh, whether it's the government systems you uh, we mentioned earlier or the fact that the, it's very hard to not have a digital footprint uh, anymore. So do you think, uh, you know, how do you still maintain your edge? Is it that, you know, historical sort of uh, legacy or a, what are the tech innovations that you're doing, if you can talk about? A right. right. So um, first off, I think, you know, uh, there is this aspect of a lot of financial institutions wherein the left hand does not talk to the right hand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, you see that right i mean you know you you probably take a credit card from a bank you probably also have a bank account with them you have to log on to two different portals to even mm-hmm. do something yeah yeah right there is a very good chance that in terms of data sharing as well the same thing happens within the bank that is mm-hmm. uh, the first 
risk models are heavily entrenched right mm -hmm. and nobody is even willing to touch someone that has a business which is less than 3 years old mm, yes i remember right? that nobody is even that willing to yeah. touch and uh, that is the backbone of the country right and that is where the gap comes from but however everyone wants to serve them everyone wants yeah. to serve them nobody because they do not have the confidence of how do i go about executing it you know 60 million msmes right how do i reach 60 million msmes hmm. by uh, you know not spending a lot and getting hmm. reasonable gains out of uh, the business at the end of the day right and uh, shiladitya it, it's non trivial just having data. there'll be a lot of data right i mean you know the bank, at the end of the day you know while we say that we take a bank statement the bank statement is already there with that bank maybe you know they can do exactly. a <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right so why don't they do that like i said right i mean the processes are deeply entrenched there are other priorities as well right for right. that bank and for a universal bank you know you have priority sector lending and you probably have some nps from there uh, there is statutory uh, ratios that you will have to maintain so there are complications right, right? Uh, regulatory in nature um, and corporate banking is really lucrative so they'll probably want to get more uh, money uh, from from that avenue so i think you know in some sense it's a matter of focus is what you're saying it's it's, it's, it's focus it's focus at the same time you know strategically right you have to decide that here is how i want to approach this problem hmm. here is what i want to do uh, in a sector which has traditionally been very difficult even if i had um Hundreds of thousands of foot on the ground, hmm. right? This is uh, this is not a problem wherein you know I already probably you know think about a different kind of a business, right? I'll give you an example wherein uh, there's newspaper and milk coming to my doorstep every day. Someone is delivering that every day. I'm going to digitize it, and my value add is going to be that uh, you know you can pause uh, uh, sending milk sometime. You can order. Yeah. uh yeah. e easily right and you, you want a different kind of a newspaper i can change that quickly online this is this is not that this is not uh, digitizing something that is working physically right and making it better this is something that is that doesn't work very well even in the physical world mm -hmm. right and uh, which is why shiladitya and amit uh, we are the only game in town and that's also by the way a uh, surprising thing to note right that uh, there are uh, i'm sure there are other people trying to uh, aid uh, you know service the msme market and probably credit for them as well in some other way but the way you're talking about it it seems like uh, you know it's just a matter of everyone else putting their time energy and focus into you know this one single single problem uh, uh, which which comes brings me to you know uh, ask you what what is your road ahead because uh, you know you've uh, as a company as a platform you've been there uh, what is what is next for lending card what does the next 5 3 to 5 years look like uh, and if you could give us a little a glimpse of that right so you know um, one of our investors uh, says that you know you have been a fintech now you got to be a tech fin Huh? right okay. so uh, so which is uh, you know uh, so we have a technology arm right lending card technology is private limited and lending card finance uh, limited uses the services the technologies I that see. are developed within lending card finance whatever lending card technology is private limited now just like uh, lending card finance limited is a sort of a quote and quote client of lending card technologies we could have other banks and nbfcs mm -hmm. right on our platform right using our uh, you know technology stack which we are continuously maintaining upgrading you know uh, ensuring that it meets regulatory requirements and also offers a superior customer experience so in the past if you have seen we have focused really on the uh, loan product and servicing our customer now we are actually focusing more on product first view and a tech first view to everything that we are doing right mm -hmm. right i told you about the acceptance process earlier right wherein a uh, customer comes in they look at a certain rate of interest and they are probably wanting to negotiate right right and then you know someone they probably want to talk to someone but how do we make that 
as well enticing and how do we bring in a customer and give them confidence that look this is the best that you uh, you can probably get or is, is lending card really going to give me this and are they going to service me well right how do we give them confidence that maybe you know there is 100 others within a 20 km range that uh, have taken a similar loan from us and here is two that you can probably talk to Mm-hmm. right so all this is possible right i mean you know because you, you can you get more confidence right out of the process mm-hmm. if you as a customer know that oh hey you know what so that that entire process of gamification and enhancing the product using technology mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. is where uh, we are investing heavily very cool <clears throat> that's Understood. one part. And- the second part uh, like i said right is that other banks and nbfcs you know because we are able to we eat our own dog food anyway right so right. Uh, the uh, the other banks and nbfcs can onboard to our platform as well and with a lot of confidence right in our origination process in our underwriting process in our ability to uh, provide guarantees around that uh, and in our ability to sort of provide them intelligence to be able to collect as well right. so this end to end bouquet Uh, only uh, you know enhancing those as platforms and making sure that uh, you know others can onboard to this is where uh, we are going to be investing heavily as well so <laughs> gidhar you know coming back to a little bit more about the tech stack itself uh, you what makes let's say your platform your technology teams platform and you know a, a little bit more unique uh, in the market right so if you look at a, a traditional um, financial Uh, company right i mean a lot of them tend to run as an enterprise and their technology stacks are uh, around enterprise solutions which uh, tend to be a little antiquated and more than antiquated they are not really agile uh, we have built a technology stack which is cloud native which is first uh, born in the cloud and runs in the cloud by default and uh, we are able to move really really fast you know we don't take many weeks to roll out features you know we mm-hmm. we think about something today maybe it's a gamification feature uh, we are able to roll it out within a week now the way we are able to do that is because you know we have services the the entire technology ecosystem itself is organized in a way wherein you know specific uh, services or specific pieces of the technology do one thing and do it very well and they are connected mm. to with the, with others using you know very well defined apis and it it mm. fits in very nicely into you know the modern api kind of an ecosystem right so we are able to churn really fast and we are able to run very fast on on that front that's one the second thing shiladitya is that you know there's a lot of focus right on technology that people may have built in the past mm. we uh, tend to uh, not be married to that <clears throat> what i mean to say is that we are willing to drop something that might be inefficient right and uh, not um, it something that would not enable us to run faster going into the future so we take that long term view right mm-hmm. we uh, we keep in touch with the latest trends in technology you know be that uh, devops uh, uh, state of devops or you know thoughtworks radar or you know the cloud native computing foundation trail maps and then we follow those in order to keep us uh, ahead of the game so our engineers in particular you know follow these trends and they bring those back the trends back in into our ecosystem very very quickly so that's something uh, unique which not a lot of other players are able to do and uh, you know uh, in, in in the past one of my managers had said that when others can copy your features the only uh, <clears throat> competitive advantage that you may have is how quickly can you roll out new features right so you know <laughs> yeah. right and and that is something that we focus on a lot right how quickly can we roll out new features which are value add nice no that's good to know i mean and that obviously that's one of the key <clears throat> i would say reasons like uh, you know you would stay ahead so uh, of course yes. it it uh, and that's you know i think uh, it's a theme for most uh, fintech companies uh, in that sense but uh, you know it's good to know that you've invested heavily and focused a lot on actually building that tech the tech shops of the platform uh, out so much yeah. and even on the people uh, part uh, shiladitya what we've also done is you know the hierarchy at lending card is very very flat 
you know, if you look at another company, you will hear terms like, okay, junior software engineer, senior software engineer, yeah, yeah, SD, one, yeah. two, three, four, architect, a uh, lot of titles, right? But at Lending Card, we've tried to follow more, you know, Netflix kind of a philosophy, if you will, wherein we have only software engineers and senior software engineers, you know, uh, a category uh -huh. of people. Um, you know, if you have to look over someone's shoulder when they're doing some work, right, then that's a software engineer for me. But if you don't have to look over their shoulder, then they're a senior software engineer for me, right? And they don't have to defer to someone, right? An individual engineer can uh, go explore the ecosystem, take ownership of the product, build uh, what they feel like building, right? So we've enabled our engineers with, uh, with uh, these constructs as well, which works in our favor really well. So uh, a little tangential to this also is, uh, you know, uh, like I said earlier, there was a status quo of credit in the country anyway, uh, of various, of a uh, very, uh, all these sort of unorganized credit, uh, you know, options. But uh, very initially also, there was a lot of this microfinance sort of a revolution, right? Uh, which uh, which India did go through. Uh, and a lot of, I know it was focused maybe on certain sectors, uh, probably like agriculture and so on. So what happens uh, to, you know, that market? Are you in a way, I'm, my question is, which is the market you're disrupting? Is it, are you disrupting more of the traditional bank credit uh, and are like, are like the big listed companies choosing to work with you instead of the bank just because of the process uh, efficiency or is it really that? uh the smaller of the long tail msmes yeah oh. I, I think like maybe what well, would be helpful here is to get an understanding of uh what is the like uh you, what's the average loan size what's the average yeah term, the distribution right? Cause, of your because yeah. that right. would kind of help with understanding like you know who your customer mm -hmm. is really correct so i mean uh, shiladitya uh, traditionally right you know our customer see our customer base we are very you know we worship our customer right i mean it's mm -hmm. msmes so micro, small, medium enterprise, and uh, they are they are the backbone of this country, and we want to serve them. So that customer base is standard, and uh, there is in terms of the average ticket size, there is a there's a variety of there's a whole spectrum of needs for this customer, right? I mean, someone might want a crude, someone might want you know one lakh rupees. On average, our ticket size is between five to ten lakhs. Okay, and our okay. average tenor uh, has. Uh, grown over time because when we started initially we did not have a lot of data to add, to, to be able to understand probability of default right and uh, what might be our nps so it has grown over time and we are somewhere around two and a half to three years in terms of average tenor right now okay so the, uh so i mean like if you're talking about that kind of money i'm going to guess it's mostly working capital related right because again yes. that that seems to be like you know that if you own like as you said an electrician shop you want to expand the shop or you want to buy a tempo to do some deliveries or something like that Correct. those Correct. those those kinds of uh expenses do you see Absolutely. a lot of uh do you see a lot of people like topping loans up like i i, I topping up might not be the right word but let's say i i need a payday loan right now to make payroll so i'm taking two lakh rupees this month and then Three months later, I'll take another five lakh rupees this time to buy the tempo. Do you see a lot of that kind of thing once people come in, or is it uh, I, because I, I feel like one of the things that does happen over here is that uh, in India generally, right, which I think is different from other places where I've had some exposure to business, right, is that uh, over here what happens is people say, Acha, we are taking this much ka bank ka loan, whereas in other places they work with credit lines, right? So it's, it's so over here you take a loan for each thing you do. When you want a machine, you take a loan. When you want to expand your plant, you take a loan. When you want to do this, you take a loan. Whereas uh, in the US, for example, most smaller businesses have credit lines, which Correct. they basically use as needed and pay back as when as and when. So like does this, yeah, yeah does, does this function kind of like that? Or I, I mean, do people use it yes. like that? Because it seems like it would be something that uh, would work well like that. It definitely does, Amit. As in, you know, uh, our mainstay has been a working capital loan. But, uh, you know, uh, as we expand our customer segment, we realize that there are a bunch of other financial products that are important for our customers, right? And uh, that need not necessarily be uh, credit related or money related alone. Uh, like you said, right, some of them might want a very short term loan. 
right maybe for 6 months and it's about only 50000 rupees right? right now that works on a completely different kind of a model right so that's that's one area that we we've been working on second thing is like you said right a, a overdraft kind of a thing wherein there's a bunch of uh, cash and then you uh, dip into it whenever you need it right right then there is uh, invoice discounting right i mean you know mm. you, you're going to purchase something and then you know you would want to cover that uh, expense right and then uh, quickly pay it off then uh, there is this uh, other uh, you know but at the end of the day what we also done is that we've said that look all of this is basis the um uh, score that we have built right like mm. for a particular mm. customer right and now we are actually saying that we'll offer that score as a service so mm. you know you could buy uh, your business's financial health report from lending card and uh, say that look lending card thinks that i am so and so so much credit worthy right and then right. you can probably take mm. that to someone and say that uh, give me a loan give me right. something better yeah right okay. so that's possible and it's 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 really you know um, it's like bureau score right we want our scoring mechanism to become become the default in this industry interesting very interesting very uh, you know giridhar uh, a uh, lot of people who are probably listening to this uh, you know uh, have understand let's say the this the fintech market uh, we've actually had a lot of folks uh, we've spoken to uh, you know who work in various sort of the consumer lending and other products right uh, what would be uh, you know as closing notes what would be your recommendation or advice to you know anyone who's looking to build in this space or of course uh, if you want to do a shout out if they want to reach out to you where's the best place to reach out to you uh you know just just some uh, parting notes on that i think you know definitely uh, uh, my uh, email address is giridhar@lendingcard.com happy to speak to anyone who would like to talk to me about this right it's a very interesting space and uh, you know i i believe there's space for a lot of uh, a lot of innovation here right and uh, there's a space for a lot of products um, to be developed out here you know if there are uh, certain Uh, segments wherein people are working in allied businesses and they would like to leverage lending card as a partner right you know uh, we welcome them with open arms you know if, if there's a um, e-commerce website that's probably catering to maybe you know handicrafts and they would like to uh, partner with us to offer uh, credit to their uh, sellers on their platform uh, right artisans. you know nice. we could we could we could enable them right we could enable them with scoring mechanism we could enable them with uh, the credit products that we have uh, we would we would want to partner with people right to serve the segment at the end of the day right in whichever way we want uh, we we would we, we can that could be using the credit score or by actual uh, product as well or even you know if there's some uh, <clears throat> lending happening from there and you know share data with us and then we could actually crunch it for them and uh, figure out insights for them there's a whole uh, whole lot of ways we could uh, partner and, and would you say that you don't want to be the only game in town because it can get it can get boring if you don't have uh, you know others trying to disrupt you seems like uh, seems so like see, it's i think, think right shiladit if you if you talk to people right i mean there is a lot of people who are lending to msme segment i mean you know every bank says that uh, they are lending to msme segment there are specialized uh, financial institutions that are uh, lending to the msme segment it's a very favored it's a favorite uh, uh, segment right it's severely under tapped so um, from that point of view you know there are other players but when i say we are uh, the only game in town you know the way we do it and the way we approach it and the way our trajectory is mapped and our future is mapped is unique in nature right right and uh, that uh, i have a strong belief that that will continue to be the case <laughs> lovely lovely <laughs> thank you right awesome uh, I'll, i'll i'll just throw a quick note in every there for for everybody over here please do remember ratings or reviews wherever you're listening to this if it's on apple we would appreciate that on uh, do the review as well you know i know it's writing some words but do write some words it helps a lot it hel- it helps people find out about the podcast so please we'd appreciate that yes and giridhar i mean uh, let's 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 continue to see lending cart uh, sort of you know top the charts uh, in that sense uh, and of course uh, all the best and thank you so much for speaking with us today and sharing the story certainly thanks uh, thanks for inviting me shilaritya and amit thank you thank you thank you i v m